If you can get rid of things that you do not need, you're not ruled by your possessions, therefore, life can be better. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a doctor, I love learning, here's a book I've summarised for you. It starts off with this challenge about minimalism, to, to get that mindset. So day one, you'd discard one item from your house. Day two, two items. Day three, three items. Up until you're up to 30 items a day that you're then removing. And that process of decluttering really will help you get into the process of thinking, what do I actually need here? See, there's three different items of things. There's essentials. This would be food, clothes, shelter. And most of these needs are actually universal. Then there's non-essential items. Those are things that we actually want in life, such as a tripod to do a YouTube video with. Then there's junk. These things we think we like, but they don't actually give us any purpose or bring any joy. So what you're aiming to do if you want to become a minimalist is get rid of junk and not obtain more junk. So there's a 90-90 rule in which you'd look at an item and you'd think, have I used it in the past 90 days? And am I, or am I likely to use it in the next 90 days? And if not, the thing is to get rid of it. When I say get rid of it, you could sell it, give it to charity. I'm not talking about just unnecessarily wasting things. There's this 10 to 1 rule as well, which is thinking about getting rid of 10 items for every one item you purchase. In part, this is so that then you're very deliberate about what you buy. In addition, you may think of some items when you keep when you're sorting through your things, what do I keep? Well, there's a just in case thing or just for when. Now, just in case would be things like a fire blanket. You may need it, hopefully you don't have to, but it is worth keeping in case you need it. Um, just for when would often be things such as toothpaste, consumables that you are going to purchase and use at some stage. But what you want to do is avoid unnecessary purchases. And really you want to ask yourself, can you get by without that item? And the more expensive the item is, it may be the longer you actually wait before purchasing that item. And in a way, that is to interrupt kind of impulsive buying. Now, the book argues not to upgrade items. So you'd only replace them really if they break or wear out. If needed, you may want to repair it, replace it, or just go in without. And if you're struggling to sell things when you're clearing out your house, you may want to add a deadline and say, well, if that's not, if I've not sold it by then, I'll just donate it to charity. So when you look at an item, you may think, what if it spontaneously combusts? Would I care? Would I be relieved? If you care, then you may want to keep this item. If not, get rid of it. Because at the end of the day, life's for living, not being ruled by items. Happiness often goes up with money, for example, but then it plateaus out. So if you buy one car, fantastic, you get that benefit from it. But if you buy three or four cars, you're really just giving yourself a headache by maintaining them. Talking about giving, what you want to do is give people gifts of experiences, particularly minimalists. They'll remember these more and enjoy it more. And if people are giving you gifts as a newfound minimalist, what you may want to do is help direct them to say, this is what I enjoy, so that therefore they'll give you an experience that you could potentially enjoy together rather than just more junk that you don't need. Hope you found that helpful. Feel free to like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.